So good evening. Welcome to the last talk on foundations. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found this whole talk um, beneficial in growing in your relationship with God. The first topic I want to talk about tonight is money and possessions. See, what we've been saying for the last six weeks is that a relationship with God affects every part of your life. When you become a Christian, every part of your life is transformed by a relationship with Jesus. And that includes your possessions and your money. That's why it's vitally important that we touch on this subject today. And the official term for this and what the Bible uses is a word called stewardship, which essentially just means making proper use of your money and possessions. And if we look in the Bible, in the New Testament, becoming a Christian affected people's attitude towards money right from the very start. We see it in the very first Christian church in Acts 2.45. It says they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. We also see it in Acts 4.33-35. It says there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. See, straight away, we see people having a different attitude towards money. We also see in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 16, God encourages people to bring offerings to him during their times of worship. This is a principle that we see throughout the Bible. So what we see is that giving to God is a natural thing. It's a natural thing for Christians to do. And you might have some questions about that. So I just want to look at some of the common questions we have when it comes to possessions and money. How about this one? When you give to God, where do you actually give? Well, first of all, and, and probably most importantly, if you ask me, you give to relieve the needs of the community around you. You give money to God so that it can go out to bless others. You help those who have little. You help the poor. And this is something that we see in the verses that I shared out of the book of Acts um, a couple of minutes ago. But you also see it in the book of Romans 15, 26. You see Paul taking up a gift to give to the poor and needy. Let me tell you, God's heart is for the poor and needy. God is compassionate and we should be the same when we become Christians. So that's the first place you give when you give to God, you give to the poor and needy. The second place that you give is to those who are benefiting the church spiritually. Those who are leading the church so that, that money can be used for the different purposes within the church whether it's reaching new people with uh, the love of God, or whether it's a day-to-day -day running of the church. We see teaching of that in uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and also in 1 Timothy as well. It's really important that our church is able to function financially. So in answer to that question, where do you give? Well, you give to the local church primarily. That is a starting point. And from there, that money can bless others. Most importantly, if you ask me, the poor and the needy. Another question you might have is, well, when you give to God, how much do you actually give? And this is an interesting question. I remember asking the same question um, when I became a Christian. See, money has always been an issue for me. I grew up uh, very poor. I had very little money. I grew up in a, a very difficult set of circumstances. And I remember having um, this experience as a teenager where I became a Christian and my attitude towards money changed. I felt that my newfound faith led me to want to give. But with very little money, I would ask the question, well, how much can I possibly give? Well, you know, what is the amount that I should be giving? And the key thing to say about this, and something that helped me, is that it's entirely up to you. There is no compulsion to give anything. Salvation is free. 
our Christianity is free. It's not like a club that we have to pay financially to each year or we'll lose our place in heaven. It's not like a subscription. It's nothing like that. Actually, any money that we want to give must be a free will offering um, coming from a place of worship to God. And it's important to hear that. God doesn't want us to feel guilt tripped into giving. Actually, it's got to come from the right place and from the right heart. The Bible does give some helpful guidelines around giving though. 1 Corinthians 16 seems to suggest that our giving should be planned and proportional to our income. So we should actually make a decision to give to God based on what we earn. It's not like you see in many churches where the offering plate comes around and you scratch around in your pockets to find some loose change to shove in there. Actually, we should be planning our giving and it should reflect the money that we earn. The Bibles are also really helpful um, in the Old Testament. It's got a principle called tithing. And this is where you give the first 10% of your earnings to God. And this is just one model of giving, but it's something that many Christians strive to try and achieve. And let me tell you, 10% can seem a lot. There's a question I asked as a teenager, especially when I was earning 20 quid a week working in a, in a Saturday job. I thought, 10%? But do you know what? God has never let me down, personally. In fact, my experience is that God has been able to do way more with my 90% than I could ever do with my 100% on my own. I've never gone without, and for me, that's just a, a testament of God's grace. The very last thing to say on this point is that Jesus is so, so clear. Please rest assured that it isn't in any way about the amount that you give, but about the attitude that you have towards giving. We give joyfully in a guilt-free way, which reflects our worship to God. That's so important. So the third question you might have is, when you give to God, well, well, how should you give? And we see a really helpful list of things in 2 Corinthians about our attitude to giving. You may want to discuss these in your group, actually. Um, but when we give, we should give generously, freely, cheerfully, and expectantly. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if you don't have all of those attitudes when you're giving, it's better not to give. It's better not to give at all. God isn't primarily after your money. That's not what this is about. And I guess throughout scripture, we see the important principle that we should give in faith, expecting God generously to meet our needs. Just as I shared earlier, God's been able to meet all of my needs. I've never gone without and I've never considered not giving to God because actually for me, giving is an important principle and I want to encourage you to, to think the same. So that's all about stewardship. That's all about the awkward topic of money. Um, you might have a lot to discuss about that and, I, and I'm sure you'll have some lively discussions in your group, which is, which is great. I guess I just want to finish our last talk on foundations with a little bit of a what now. You know, what does all of this mean? What should be the outworking of everything that we've talked about over the last six weeks? Because let me tell you, as, as Christians, obviously we live by the teachings of Jesus. We look to him and we want to model our lives on him. So I guess a good place to look is to think, well, what is Jesus' last command to us before he leaves earth? I don't know if you ever do this. So I always do it. My wife will give me like a list of instructions or a list of things. And I'll always remember the last one, <laughs> usually forgetting the others, but I always remember the last one. And I guess it's the same with Jesus. I always look at the last thing that Jesus says. And the last thing that Jesus says to his disciples before he leaves is that we should go out and make believers, make disciples of all nations. The outworking of a transformed life, the outworking of a relationship with Jesus is that we should go out and share that with other people. It should be the most natural reaction to becoming a Christian. 
Do you know, we see it in the Bible. There's this amazing story in the, in the book of Mark when Jesus heals this man. He's been suffering for a long time with, a, with an illness and Jesus heals him. And the man is so grateful. He's so happy, He's so excited that Jesus has healed him. And Jesus says to him, look, go and tell your family. Go and tell everyone you know about the things that I've done. Go and take your enthusiasm and tell others about me. And that should be the same with us with thankful hearts, full of joy and thanksgiving for everything that Jesus has done for us. We should want to go and share that with others. If your life's truly been transformed by Jesus, you should want everyone to know that. And just to encourage you, you don't have to know everything about the Bible to do that. You don't have to have all of the questions answered. You don't need to be able to unpack every word of the Bible in, in great detail. Actually, you just need to understand what God has done for you, what impact God's had on your life. That's enough. Actually, you can share your story with others. What was life like before knowing God and how has God transformed your life? People can't argue with that. You should be open to tell your friends about Jesus. You should encourage them to explore faith for themselves. Hey, look at the impact it's had on my life. Come and check it out for yourself. We have this really uh, helpful little motto in, in Jubilee Church called Make Friends Try Alpha. And it's about inviting your friends to explore Christianity for themselves. It's not about Bible bashing them and telling them that they must believe what you believe, but it's actually encouraging them to explore faith for themselves, just as many of you did on our Alpha course. Invite your friends to Alpha or to church and get them to explore Jesus for themselves after hearing the difference that he's made in your life. I think that is the most natural outworking of a transformed life a passion to take this news about Jesus to the ends of the earth. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy your discussion time.